Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Today I just want to talk a little bit about model organization. Now, I'm going through this because I am seeing this going on out there. You know, I'm reviewing a number of models, I'm seeing models on the Enterprise DNA support forum and questions, etc. Uh, and I would uh, say that some are getting confused just uh, and, and, that, and it could be fixed in a very, very simple and intuitive way. Now, if you've gone through any of the say, free beginner guide courses that uh, I put out there through Enterprise DNA, you'll know that I'm very, very big on organization, naming conventions, simple best practices like that. They help so much when you're developing inside a Power BI. And this, you know, I basically just want to reiterate how important it is to use measure groups, measure tables within your within your models. Now, if we have a look at uh, this uh, report here, this came from the February 2018 Learning Summit. And you'll see on the right hand side here that there's a number of these measure groups, measure tables, right? All of these double calculators that are represented at the top here. Now you see here that over so the, the learning summit, the development side of the learning summit was only three sessions of about 45 minutes, maybe you know, up to an hour. And within that time, we created about 40 to 50 measures in all of these all of these unique groups, right? And if you don't organize these in an intuitive way, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna click through them and you can see how many we created and how quickly we created this. If you just have these within all of your um, tables within your data model, then I'm 100% confident that you would just get absolutely lost in terms of what you're actually doing in your development. Now, I like to use a methodology, which I've mentioned, uh, I mentioned a, a, a bit, and it's called measure branching. And I like to segregate, I like to segregate the um, measures and put them into groups based on what branch they are in. Now, I always start with the core, the core, I call them core calcs, and, and basically just think of this as the, the, the trunk of your tree. And I call these key measures. And this is where I start off and I create all these really simple DAX measures. And I use sum, I use average, I use sum x, I use all the really simple uh, uh, core, core functions, all the iterating functions and aggregating functions. I put them into one measure group. And then I branch out into these uh, selected analytical you know, patterns, if you like, and things like cumulative total, moving averages, averages per day, ranking, scenario analysis, segmentation techniques, time comparison. Even if you know just your time comparison measure group can be very, very uh, long uh, and can have lots of measures, right? Because not only are you creating something like sales last year, you might actually want to ca calculate well, the difference between sales this year and last year. And then you might want to create the percentage change between this year and last year. So you can very, very quickly see you know, how you can get to lots and lots of these measures. And you want to be able to keep it really intuitive so that you can go and reference these measures and drag them into your reports and visualizations and it can be more and it can be seamless you don't want to you know and i see this all the time you don't want to be searching through all of your tables trying to find which measure goes um you know is located where you know so sometimes even your measures might be named really um, poorly and you're searching around going oh is this measure for that is this measure for that all of this stuff can be so easily sorted and can make a huge difference in, to, in, in terms of how you are actually and the speed with which you're creating reports, you know, how effectively you're creating reports, etc. Now what I actually do in the model as well, I think this is this is important too from an organization perspective. So what I do is I usually place my measured tables over to the side. Sometimes I also place them at the bottom as well. Um, but you, you'll get a few of these, right? I mean, we've got maybe, um, uh, what have we got here? Almost 10. We've got almost 10 of these and what I like to do is I just like to put them over to the side because they don't have they don't have a relationship with our core model but they are important to reference within this section because we actually do want to see okay well these are all the the key groups the key groupings of calculations that are going to go into our report so I always put them in um, yeah you don't want them messy you don't want them just put every around here you want them actually to be in one clear group where they are easily identifiable and you can you know very easily go and check okay well these are all my ranking formulas for example and that's basically it right that's that's all i mean that's the key thing i wanted to show you uh, showcase here um and but you know i, I, I want to reiterate just how how key you know in terms of speed in which to go and reference things and find things etc it certainly helps a huge amount not only that you can take advantage of things like the search bar inside of here you know you can um, very quickly type in something and it will come up with uh, all of the relevant uh, things within one select group which is again very 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 important 
The other thing in terms of when you actually select on visualizations, you can always see where these appear. You know, it's very easy for you to understand uh, how, how things are set up, how someone um, someone else might have set something up, how someone post, you know, in the future might look at your report and you want them to be able to eat quick, quite quickly and easily go and reference these things, right? Go and see, okay, well, these are all the moving average calcs. These are all the core calculations. These are all my cumulative total uh, pattern formulas, etc. Okay, so that's about it. Just want to uh, highlight that point. Well, actually, maybe before I go, I'll just show you how to actually create a measure group. Um, you know, I have showcased this many times, so I don't. Uh, I, uh, hopefully, you have seen it before. But if you don't know how to actually create it, it is so ridiculously easy. All you have to do is go into data up the top here. And that will open up a, um, a, a table box like this. You don't even need to put anything inside of uh, the table. You can leave it blank and then just go load. And then that will create a table. It won't build any relationships because you don't actually have any data in there. And then all you have to do is then create a measure or place a measure inside of here. And um, I'm just going to go and call this one. I'll just go reference another measure just to just to quickly create one. So I create a measure there. I go and delete this column. So I go and delete it. And once I've deleted it, I just flick this show hide pane in and out. And you'll see that this is now a measure group, uh, a measure table. So that demo sales is in there. I mean, obviously that's irrelevant um, to what we're doing in this case, but that was just to sh quickly show you how, how you can actually create these things. Okay, so uh, that's about it. If you like the content, certainly throw us a like. Hopefully hopefully you can start using some of these techniques. I mean, this is what this video is all about. I want to show you, tell you these techniques, and I do, and you know, the, the, the way to get the most out of it is to actually start implementing these things. Get into good habits, um, because it will certainly you know, benefit your development uh, in the long run, for sure. Don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of content uh, coming out, lots of really, really interesting uh, content around Power BI for beginner, intermediate, advanced users. So, so certainly want to get that into your hands as soon as it's released. Okay, all the best. Talk to you soon.